Before I get started on this review, I just wanted to make it absolutely clear that this will be a spoiler-laden review. I feel like in my particular case, the best way, the most fullest way I can review this movie basically involves it being spoiled because it's part of, I guess, one of my criticisms about the movie. So now that that's out of the way, hello, huge movie fanatic Nate stopping on by. This time I'm coming at you to review a movie that I've known about for the last decade or more. I first discovered the original movie ten years after it came out in 1991. I'm a huge fan of the film from 1981, Don't Go in the Woods. It's been a part of my teen years growing up into adulthood and as I continued to grow up into adulthood and now as I'm continuing to age, don't Go in the Woods has always been just a so bad it's frickin' amazing movie and a big part of my life. and Maybe not a big part of my life, but a sizable part of my life as a movie aficionado and a film fan and a horror slasher fan and a, a woods enthusiast and stuff. So when I heard somewhere, I don't know if it was 09 or if it was 2010, I heard that Vincent D'Onofrio, who is known for playing Jack Torrance in The Shining, just kidding, he was that guy in the full metal jacket who, I was going to say what he did, but I can I can leave that spoiler unspoiled for that movie if you haven't seen Full Metal Jacket. But Vincent D'Onofrio, best known for Full Metal Jacket and Adventures in Babysitting, directs this opus, which I thought at the time, and still do, I, th I thought it was just the weirdest frickin', and I guess it's his, his di directorial debut, and it's just like, okay, don't go in the woods. and. I don't think I'd really even call it so much of a remake, and that's one of the things I can say, one of the positive things I can say about it. So, basically, this movie came out in, what, I think 2010, so cut to 12 years later, I see it for free on Tubi. I'm just glad that I was able to see it for free and that I didn't pay for it. The The one thing that I'll say that's good about this movie is if you're going to, I don't know if you'd call this a remake, I guess it's kind of a remake because people go out in the woods and die. But I do like, the thing I do like about this, you know, quote-unquote remake is that it, it is so different than the original. So many times you make a movie like, for example, the, the 1998 Gus Van Zandt Psycho remake is a perfect example of a, of a remake that just goes too far and basically is more or less a shot-by-shot -shot remake of the original. That's probably the only movie I can think of that just goes too far in trying to just replicate the original and failing miserably. The one thing I like about the 98 Psycho is he actually, with the technology available, had the opportunity to realize Hitchcock's vision of starting out in this huge shot of Phoenix and going in one shot all the way into the hotel room and up to the bed. After that, you can turn the movie off. That was the best part of that move, or that remake, is being able to actually realize Hitchcock's vision. But at any rate, um, you know, so this, this remake is, is interesting and it takes the premise but does something completely different with it. So if you're not familiar with the premise of this film, you know, I don't know if they're 20-somethings, uh, you know, band. I don't know what the hell you'd call this music, just kind of whatever. It's it, it just kind of rock, you know, music, mostly acoustic guitar stuff, and just light rock, or... I don't know if this... Is this emo? I don't know if this is emo. I don't know what this stuff is. I pretty much do punk rock and and metal in, 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 in some gangster ghetto rap these days, I'm afraid. And <laughs> it's just, I hesitate to, to admit it, but it's, I've, I've recently discovered, well not recently, a couple past years discovered that, and I've been having fun with it. It's, it's something completely new to me, so it's, it's, it's been kind of fun. But uh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not really big into emo, and so many of these guys when they're singing are making these faces just like in the one main guy with his black hair and just an emo look. So I don't know if the, you know, the music in this movie is classified as, as emo or, or what, but they, they come across as kind of emo. Um, but anyway, the, the premise of this movie is this band, 20-something, and we'll just say emo band, this one main guy, you know, kind of the head of the band's taking their, you know, this whole band out in the woods to basically get away from girls, drugs, alcohol, and just the, you know, basically the city life and stuff to go off into the woods and really, really just create uh, some some great music that they can, you know, make the slam bang album with or whatever. And honestly, you know, when the movie was starting and stuff, I I was really kind of surprisingly digging it. I was like, oh wow, this is kind of cool, and I like how it. I, I liked how the beginning was and, you know, them getting out there and stuff like that. But honestly, 
when you know not long into the movie obviously the you know the all these groupy girls show up at night at the around the fire and the um yeah they show up at night i think and uh you know the main guy emo guy black hair just black with everything um he's 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 you know visibly upset because he took his you know he wanted to get away from all of this uh i can understand wanting to get away from drugs and drinking in the city but not women, I mean, you know, I, but I, no, but in all seriousness, um, you know, he wanted to get away from everything so he could have a focus, no distractions for his band, so they could really do some heavy music, uh, you know, writing and recording and, and, you know, stuff like that, a demo for uh, some slam bang record they want to make. So he was, you know, visibly, he was visibly disturbed and kind of upset when the girls show up. And honestly, this is the spoiler part of the movie or the review rather, when when I saw that this guy was so bummed out about, you know, the women showing up, I knew he was the killer. I was just like, oh, this guy's probably going to be the killer. And it was kind of just a, a, just a thought that kind of came and went, and I really didn't give it uh, too much. I guess I've just seen way too many of these movies. I guess I didn't give it too much thought, but spoiler alert, cut to the very end, the guy's the killer. But anyway... So this is the part of the movie where honestly it just gets to be um, repetitive and annoying. Now, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of like if you look on Amazon, the the star rating for this movie is is really really high, and that's because a lot of people. I, I saw some reviews that said you know that they really really love the music in it, and you know more power to you if that's you and if you know that that's how you feel about this movie. But honestly, this movie makes a musical seem like not even a musical because like once it's like I don't know 20 minutes or 30 minutes into the movie it seems like almost the entire rest of the movie is a song and it's like you you know honestly this movie as I said makes musicals look like silent films because it's like 30 minutes in it's like when the girls arrive and stuff it seems like almost the rest of the movie is just song after song after song and what ends up happening I don't have a problem with them jamming around the fire and, and doing that but what, what ends up happening is I mean I kinda thought this was cool at first and then they kept doing it and I got sick of it but what also ends up happening is you know like two girls end up going wanting to go back to the van so they can go back to the city and like you know with a little battery powered lanterns and on, on their way there that they're like walking and like singing you know, as they're walking back uh, to the van, so it's like becomes not just a movie about. I guess when they when they breached that wall of of you know it, it becoming a, like a full blown musical, that's when it was kind of like oh I don't really like that, like just jamming around the f fire and and singing that takes place in the movie in a practical sense. I was okay with not not every minute of the movie, but then once they start having you know, expressing emotions and, 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 you know, feelings of characters in the movie through song and they're singing and there's, there's a, you know, there's, there's instrumentation accompaniment when there's no instruments around kind of thing. It's just like, oh my God. So, you know, to make a long story not as long, what ended up happening for me in this movie is just there became, you know, just a, a, a musical overload where, it's just like, oh my god, like, you know how in a horror movie, you know, a lot of the um, <clears throat> formula, if you, formula, if you will, is, is to have like a, a scare and, a, and, you know, and then to give them people a moment to, oh, then they laugh and, you know, they get relaxed and, you know, it's kind of like scare, laugh, relax, repeat. I mean, this is like, they don't even give the viewer a chance to recover from the last song before it's like goes right into the next song so it's like I couldn't believe like 40 minutes in 60 minutes into the movie how many frickin frickin songs we've already like endured and don't get me wrong it's like not that you know this the music isn't like horrible or anything but it's just I could you know I, I endured like the la the first 30 minutes but once it just starts like piling on the songs where they're like just keep like it's like a chain smoker where it's like they when they stop they just start another one it's like and then the movie forgets completely that it's like a you know I don't know what a, a, a movie title that you know with the same title and premise that you know came after a slasher horror movie so I guess um you know to make a long story not as long once again like if you're going into this movie expecting it to be some cool like horror movie it's really 
it's not so much a horror movie. It's like a, a movie with people with a, just a shit ton of songs. If you're into that, if if you are, more power to you. With some like horror, like half-ass horror elements, and honestly, a lot of the kills, it's like they're off screen. And I'm not saying that like the horror horror slash gore element is completely incompetent. There's a cool shot where some girl's face is, let she's laying there and her face is bashed in and half of it. And the killer just basically, I think I want to say he only uses a sledgehammer. So, I mean, he's just sledgehammering everyone. There's a kind of a cool scene, once again, kind of low budget, they don't show anything. But you don't always have to show anything where a couple are, are you know, making out in a sleeping bag. And I can't remember who zips it up. I guess the killer zips it up and then just sledgehammers them, which was a good idea. You know, that was a good idea. But ultimately, I think the, the kills were um, executed in kind of a boring manner. Like, if you're, in, in my opinion, if you're going to, make us sit through all these songs, at least try to make the kills a little more interesting, but yeah, um, I was, like I say, 20-30 minutes in, I was, I was kind of impressed, and I was like, wow, this is, this is, this might be better than I thought it ever could be, and I'm not saying, like, for people that are into movies where it's just song after song after song after song, and the same kind of whiny, emo-ish song after song after song after song, you know, if you're into that, more power to you, you'll love this movie probably. But for me, it's just like, you know, a little less singing, a little more splatter, whatever. So, <clears throat> basically, um, you know, the, the, the main guy uh, in the band kills everyone. And, you know, they do do kind of the reveal and flashback and, you know, of, of the guy being the killer kind of interesting. Where at first it makes it look like he, you know, hit the killer into the water, and then he ends up in the water, and I don't know. It's the, the reveal of the killer is a kind of a cool abstract reveal where it's not um, black and white or, or whatever, but um, yeah, and then the, the kind of cool touch at the end is, you know, he, he presents his, this, this guy at a record label, this, this demo or the CDs just coming out or whatever, Don't Go in the Woods, and I wonder if they, I would imagine they have a soundtrack to this, because, I mean, out of all movies that, you know, should deserve, that need a soundtrack, this is it, because the whole movie is a CD, you know, if you could even fit the whole thing on one, might have to be a double disker, but makes you wonder if, if there is a soundtrack, I'm not going to buy it, but, you know, do you think there, they think there really have to be for this movie, but uh, what I was saying is, you know, the, the guy who was the killer, the main band member, who's at the end of the movie, is in some record company exec's office, it's the guy from uh, Talk Radio, I want to say, and also uh, Under Siege 2, those are the two movies I've seen this guy in, I think it's that guy who makes like a cameo in this movie, maybe Vincent D'Onofrio knew him or something like that, but like, congratulations on your album, this was amazing, or whatever, and, you know, good luck on, uh, getting rid of the rest of your band. I, I knew they were just weighing you down or whatever he said. And of course the guy means it in the way of what, you know, just leaving them behind. But in, in reality, he, he probably doesn't know that, you know, he literally did get rid of the rest of the band, you know, killed them in the woods. So, you know, I mean, th there's some funny humor in this. And honestly, some of the, you know, some of the band member characters are, are, are fun. And like that, you know, the, I, I just my biggest problem with the movie is just way too many songs, so you know I'd, I'd like to go two stars, but I, because of just the song overload, let's let's um, yeah I, I'll just go one star out of four stars for Don't Go in the Woods, 2010, uh, directed by Vincent D'Onofrio. In my opinion, it, it actually started started uh, on a strong note, but then it's like 30, 40, 50 minutes into the movie, you're just like, oh my god, the they don't stop singing, and even like the even some of the well, even some of the uh, what are they called? Uh, groupy girls start singing, and you know it's to the point where they start singing their emotions. They're singing how they're feeling at every at any given moment. Like that's that's where it just goes overboard for me, and I'm like, oh my god! Like you know, jam around the fire by all means, but once it starts, like girls singing their feelings, guys singing their feelings in a kind of a situation where they don't even have instruments, they're just singing, walking through the woods, but there's instruments behind them. I mean, not behind them physically, but there's instruments in the on the soundtrack. It's just like, 
Oh my God. So I guess those are my thoughts on, on Don't Go in the Woods. 2010, I think it is on DVD. I looked on Amazon, but interestingly, it, it's, it hasn't, I don't think it's come out on Blu-ray or at least in North America. Not that I really care to have any version. I'm just glad I was able to see it for free. Just much like uh, I Spit on Your Grave, Deja Vu I, I saw for free as well. So one of the benefits to, to streaming, you get to see a lot of things for free instead of Imagine blind buying this or or I spit on your grave deja vu like this I wouldn't be so Upset about blind buying because it's it's still like out in the woods and you know that that aspect is cool But like I spit on your grave deja vu. Oh my god, but anyway, I, I as always I'm, I think I'm just rambling at this point, but I guess that'll pretty much do it feel free to let me know what you think of this film if you've seen it maybe I've saved you from the the pain of seeing it, and you know, no, uh, no offense to people who uh, enjoy the, you know, thoroughly enjoy this kind of music on, you know, nonstop, uh, you know, and, and girls singing about their emotions, and you know, if you happen to enjoy it, you enjoy it, and uh, nothing wrong with that. I just happen to be someone who, uh, who doesn't happen to enjoy it. It's, it's funny how I was sitting there watching it, like thirty, forty, fifty. 60, 70 minutes in and just thinking, God, you know, uh, you know, I didn't think that this movie could be worse than the original. And it, I think, you know, in my opinion, just because I'm not one for all those songs, I think, I think it is worse than the original. And don't get me wrong, the, I love the original, but, uh, oh my God, um, obviously the original is no touch of evil or whatever. Most people say Citizen Kane, but I actually like touch of evil more than Citizen Kane. But anyway, I'm rambling. Thank you very so much, very so much for uh, for stopping on by to listen to my review. Hope you guys enjoyed, and as always, we'll catch you on the next video.